The realm of compounding pharmacy design is intricate, nuanced, and precise. The requirements of USP 797 and USP 800 contain a number of aspects that require careful coordination of systems, equipment, and space to comply with. As a result of addressing these requirements, we have developed a kit of parts to meet Board of Pharmacy regulations, USP requirements, and our clients' needs. This kit consists of three parts, specific adjacency requirements, prescribed workflows, and specialized finishes. Adjacencies are the building blocks of laying out a pharmacy, and this begins with the anteroom. The composition of the programmatic elements are driven by the workflow and function of the space using the anteroom as the center. From there, the hood rooms are entered off of this space on either side to keep the separation of the two rooms and maintain the clean and dirty sides of the anteroom. The workspace is placed with enough overlap between hood rooms to facilitate visual connectivity. With these spaces laid out, we've set the stage for the pressure relationship between the different rooms. This is comprised of four components, room pressurization, door swings, pass-through cabinets, and HEPA filtration. Regarding pressurization, the USP 797 room begins as the most positive space, and as we move through the anteroom and into the work area, the airflow becomes progressively more and more neutral. Due to the nature of the drugs being compounded in the USP 800 room, the space is required to be negatively pressurized. This room is then directly exhausted to the exterior of the building. Pressurization in the rooms is monitored and displayed so that staff are able to quickly and accurately document this information without having to pass into the restricted zone. Doors for each of these rooms swing in the path of the airflow in order to minimize cross-contamination. Pass-through cabinets are designed to be interlocking as an added measure to maintain the proper room pressurization between spaces. HEPA filtration is installed inside each of the compounding rooms and anteroom to meet particulate counts. We touched on the concept of the separation between clean and dirty, and if we take a more in-depth look at the anteroom, we can see that the segregation of the room into these two sections is critical for proper operation. A point of demarcation via a physical red line in the floor separates the two sides. This allows the users to properly garb up using correct PPE procedures on the dirty side before transitioning to the clean side for hand washing and scrubbing. Equipment placement in this space aids in the doffing process and maintains the flow of dirty to clean. The use of scrub sinks, clean room dispensers, PPE devices, and hands-free elements help workflow and maintain cleanliness. As we move from the anteroom into the hood room, there's equal attention paid to the location and placement of equipment for optimal flow. Compounding workstations are set up with the intention of one person working at the hood at a time. Although this space may look small or cramped, it is designed with the intention that pharmacists and techs have access to 90% of the tools they need from a centralized seated position, with the goal of increasing workflow efficiency and decreasing the risk of errors or cross-contamination. The second component of the kit of parts is workflow, and a crucial component of this is visual acuity. Pharmacists use systems like dosage with cameras and physical windows into the hood rooms that allow for cross-checking work. This transparency allows for visual communication to occur between pharmacists and techs without entering the restricted zones. Telephones in the hood rooms and walkie-talkie systems like Bocera are used to aid in facilitating communication so that large volumes can be processed efficiently without the need for additional doffing. Additionally, pass-through cabinets are used to transfer finished medications from the restricted zone to the work area for final processing, creating a physical connection between these different spaces. This results in increased workflow efficiency and decreases the risk of cross-contamination. The final component of the kit of parts are the finishes. Finishes are first determined by the classification of the space. The workroom is considered an unrestricted zone. The anteroom acts as a transition space or a semi-restricted zone. And the hood rooms are classified as restricted zones. In terms of flooring, resilient sheet products with heat welded seams are used throughout in conjunction with six inch integral cove base. The transition of the flooring into the wall creates a slope which facilitates ease of cleaning. As mentioned earlier, the physical red line in the floor of the anteroom serves as a physical reminder of the doffing process. When it comes to walls, determinations for the level of finish are based on the classification of the space. In unrestricted zones, Walls are treated with a level four finish in an epoxy paint for easier cleaning. In semi-restricted and restricted zones, walls are constructed with high impact wall covering that has heat welded seams and a beveled, polished edge capable of withstanding the rigorous cleaning process these spaces require. Special sealants are used, which when dry are hard to the touch and in accordance with Board of Pharmacy requirements. In conclusion, 
This kit of parts has been intentionally designed to comply with the requirements of both USP 797 and 800, in addition to creating an efficient workflow that expedites the compounding process while maintaining a highly clean environment effective at protecting the safety of both patients and providers.